Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to your very own Baiju 6th, 7th and 8th grade channel. I'm your teacher Aishwarya and in this particular class, we are going to be looking at the topic Natural Vegetation and Wildlife Resources from the chapter Land, Soil, Water and Natural Vegetation and Wildlife Resources. This right here is chapter number 2 in Geography and with this particular topic, we would have completed the entire chapter. So now of course, since this is a live class to all my live audience, I want you to tell me if my audio, my video, and my screen and whatever I'm writing on the screen is visible to all of you. If it is, give me a quick thumbs up, right? So today I'm in a new studio where normally the chat is always there beneath the camera but today I will be looking side because that is where the live chat is. So for those of you who are watching this video much later, don't think that why is mom looking away from the camera? It's just that the live chat is running on the other side, right? So yes, my class is starting a little late than when the live schedule because Arsh ma'am's class of course extended a little beyond and we need time to set it, set things up, right? So that we have a amazing seamless class, right? Yes, for those of you who are seeing blur video very quickly, go ahead, go to settings, advanced settings and put the pixel that you want to watch it in. Yes, Archana, I know I am late, right? But I'm here. Okay. Yeah, I know it looks like I'm looking away. Ansh, I will not block you. I saw the comment which said that Ansh, uh, Ansh is a very dear child, right? Very enthusiastic child who keeps having a lot of questions and doubts. But because sometimes, you know, uh, there are other doubts that I also have to cater to. So Ansh had said that, you know, I would block him, but I will not block him today, right? I remember all of you, right? I know all of you and I hope that everybody is excited for today's class. Now, of course, students, like I would tell you one thing, right? Let me let me tell you one thing. Today, we will do this particular small, it's very chotu sa piara sa topic, right? Not very complicated, very simple, straightforward. And in the end of today's class, we will have everybody's favorite mentee quiz. Easy peasy, 10 questions are going to be there, right? So in my class, a few things that I would like to keep in mind, right? Like how I always say, Things to keep in mind for Aishwam's class. What do you need to keep in mind? Those of you who are regular will tell me this, right? What do you need to keep in mind? First and foremost, what do you need to do? Please make sure that all of you have your notebooks, have your textbooks with you because like I said, it is always easy when you have your notebook and textbook ready. Next, what do you need to do? Have your pencil, pen, stationery, sharpener, eraser. Don't run in between the live class and then get it and then suddenly you will miss things, right? Then of course, what do you need to have? You need to make sure you have your water bottle because staying hydrated is very important. Now this live stream is happening around 8 o'clock. So in case we want to have dinner also, it's okay. You can eat side by side. I will not say anything, right? Now if you are not ready, if you are ready with everything, amazing P Nair, you are very excited for class as well, right? Ma'am is not ignoring. Ma'am has a very big TV screen on the side. It's very difficult to do multitasking. So I'm trying my best. Very important. Ma'am does not ignore anyone, right? Don't say that I am ignoring because I am also a human being. Chat rate is very fast, right? So I'm trying my best to address as many comments as possible. Yes, Ashwini, sorry about that. And then of course, last but not the least, I will try to answer as many doubts as possible. And how long is today's class or this particular video going to be? I want to wind this up in 35, max to max, 45 minutes. Not more than that, right? Very chotu sa, pyara sa topic that we're going to do. Yes? Ansh, I'm going to take your question, right? I will take your question. Don't worry. You don't need to spam. I will take your question. Yes, I remember all of you here. But for very quickly, make sure you do not forget to hit the like button on this video. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button as well. To everybody who is very new to the class, good evening, good evening. In case if I'm not able to take some of your names, please don't feel bad, right? How sweet, Pawan. So sweet. But I'm also like you. Yes? Okay. So let's get started. So now, of course, I'm not going to waste a lot of time. I'm going to jump right into it, right? Now, in this particular topic, there are four important subtopics. As the chapter name suggests, land, soil, water, natural vegetation and wildlife. Yes. Now, look at this. Land as a resource we have already covered. So in case if you want an in-depth explanation of that, there's an entire live session which I've done on that. Soil as a resource and water as a resource are very simple topics that we've been learning from our lower grades. So these are concept bite videos that are going to be available. So the link I will put in the comments of this video once the live stream has ended. So in case we want to go back and watch a specific topic, you will be able to watch it, right? 
So this is also something you need to keep in mind. Now, what have we covered? I'm going to do a quick recap for five minutes, right? I will answer Ansh, be patient, right? So the first topic we learned about was land as a resource, right? So first, first let me get started with land. Now, when you talk about land as a resource, we learned about what is land, right? And we know that in the earth, 30% is there as land. Now, let me tell you one thing, yes? When I say, Ansh's doubt is, ma'am, how can you say 30% is only land when there is land under the ocean also, right? Now, we are talking about land wherein we find other organisms, right? Where we find organisms that don't have the ability. So, when we consider, we're talking about organisms that are purely found on land, right? The area that is above the water is what we are calling as 30% of land. Even though we see that there are seabeds and ocean beds, we will... When we consider this 30%, this is 30% which is not covered by water, while 70% is covered by water. So I hope you are clear with that. Then of course we learned about how land is used, how land can be classified and we learned about land degradation and conservation. Yes? Then, of course, we learned about soil. Now, soil, of course, we learned about the soil, the nature of soil, soil profile, factors that result in soil formation like parent rock, climate, relief, flora, fauna, time. Then we learned about soil degradation and how we can prevent soil, conserve, soil erosion. Now, the reason why I'm revising these topics is because it's going to come helpful for you towards the end. So now, of course, we'll move on to water, right? Now, when you talk about water, we learned about how water is the elixir of life. And we know that water is a very important renewable resource. And over a period of time, there is very little percentage of fresh water that is available to us. And because we've been exploiting and degrading the quality of water, it has resulted in water scarcity. And then, of course, occasionally, we know that this is why we need to conserve water, right? So this right here is going to be important. So now we will move on to the next topic that is going to be there, which is natural vegetation and wildlife. Now, students, I know you have a lot of doubts. So I request you to wait till I do the doubt board section. And in the doubt board section is when I will be taking your doubts. Up until then, please don't spam, right? Or please don't continuously keep posting your questions. I will try to take them as much as possible, right? So now we will learn about natural vegetation and wildlife. Now, let me ask you very simply, right? Now, very literally... If I use the word natural vegetation, yes? When I say natural vegetation, just the word, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Because if you look at it, vegetation is a word that we have more or less heard about in our lower grades, right? So can you all tell me what do you understand by natural vegetation? And says something that occurs on its own. Good. What do we mean by it? Nature. Okay, amazing. Flora, fauna, forest. Very good. Things that grow by themselves. Very good, Ashwini. Anything that grows around and that's created by nature. Very, very good, right? Yes. So when I say natural vegetation, it refers to plants that grow naturally without any human interference, right? So this is what we understand by this. But now I have a question for you. Yes. Now, when you talk about plants that grow naturally, right? We also grow, you know, we have plants in our house, right? We all have gardens in our home where we grow plants. Then we also see that there is agriculture where we grow plants, right? And then, of course, normally, right? If you see outside buildings and everything, they keep potted plants. Now, can I consider all of that as natural vegetation? I mean, they are plants at the end of the day, right? So can I consider them as natural vegetation? Yes or no in the live chat very quickly. Can I consider plants that are there as natural vegetation? No, I can see a very big no. Ma'am, that is human vegetation. No, no, yes, no. I can see the answers coming my way. Very good, very good. Okay, awesome. Absolutely not, right? Yes, exactly, Kushank. Exactly. So now what did we understand? We understood that natural vegetation is where they grow without human interference, right? Naturally occurring. But in all these cases, they are not naturally occurring. We are getting involved. Do you think agriculture will happen where one crop is grown in a piece of land if you and if say farmers don't get involved? Do you think gardens may the plant will grow in the pot if we don't take care of it, right? 
Absolutely not. So this is what we have a clear understanding of natural vegetation. Then we have wild life, right? Now when I say wild life, it refers to all the animals, birds, insects, aquatic forms that are there. Now in this case, again, we're talking about animals which are not domesticated, right? Now if you think about it, if I have a pet cat, okay, or I have a pet dog. How many of you have pet dogs at home? How many of you here have pet dogs at home? Yes? Can you tell me any of you out here have pet dogs? Yes or no? Oh, some of you really have it, right? Tanishka, Bablu, many of you have pets. Oh, that's amazing. I don't have any pets at home. I had a pet stray cat though. Like there was a stray cat who was near my house, right? So, um, I had a cat there. Okay. Yes. A German Shepherd. All right. Oh, that's amazing. Pet cats. Awesome. I also had a pet cat. Almost pet cat. So now, of course, right? Yes, I know. But in this case, can I consider a pet as a wild animal, right? Can I say pet is part of the wildlife? What do you think? Can I say pets are part of the wildlife that exists? Yes or no? What do you think? No, right? When you talk about it, domesticated means again to take care of pets. We know that especially domesticated animals, which we rear or we keep for maybe say whether it's pets of course are there as companions, as you know, like very close companions. But again, we have to take care of them. No, we need to take care of them. But animals that are naturally found, right? Animals that are naturally found in the wild, they're able to fend for themselves where we don't need to get involved. This is what we understand here as wildlife, right? So we're all clear. We're all clear about wildlife. Now, let's understand a little bit more. Now, now that we've understood the basics of what is natural vegetation and wildlife, we'll explore this idea of natural vegetation. Yes. Now, of course, when I say it refers to plants that grow naturally, do you think all over the earth, right? All over the earth, we find same type of plants, same type of climate. By now, we have established that that is not the case, right? We see that climatic conditions are different. Types of plants that grow there are different. The kind of soil that is found there are different, right? So we see that there are different conditions that are there. So now let's understand what are the conditions that affect the distribution of natural vegetation. And for this, we will watch a very small, cute video and we will come back and learn more about it. So are you ready? Yes, I hope all of you are ready. Now, in case if the sound is clear for this particular video, please do give me a thumbs up so that I know that everything is good to go. Right? Okay. How does the natural... Yes. Are you all able to hear? Are you all able to hear? If you're not able to hear, let me know, right? You are all able to hear Tarana Mam's voice? Awesome. Let's watch this video and we will come back and understand both. Yes? How does the natural vegetation grow? Well, there are a lot of factors that affect the growth of the natural vegetation. And these factors are temperature, moisture, thickness of soil, and slope of the land. But out of all these factors, temperature and moisture are the most important ones. The temperature is determined by the sunlight and the moisture is determined by the rainfall. And they together define the type of natural vegetation that will grow in a particular area. In some areas, we get plenty of sunlight and high amount of rainfall. So, there are a large number of trees that grow there. Such areas are called forests. Then, there are areas where the rainfall is low. In such areas, vast structures of tall grass are present with a few lonely trees here and there. These are called grasslands. And then there are areas where the rainfall is very low. Are you all able to see me? Are you all able to see me? Yes? Okay. Are you all able to see me? Now are you all able to see? I hope you are able to hear me. Forget about the video that was playing, but you are able to hear me and see me, right? Yes. Okay. Awesome. That is what matters, right?
So now, of course, quickly to summarize what we have just learnt. We saw that the growth of those natural plants, right, or growth of vegetation. Now, this is a very important paragraph in your textbook, so you can star mark this or highlight it along with me, right? So we see that growth of vegetation that is there mainly depends upon temperature and moisture. What is moisture? The water content that we find in the air, right, in the form of water vapor. Now, based on that, we see that we have forests, grasslands, scrubs, and tundra, right? Now, in Especially in forests, we know that it has, it is found, or forests are found growing in areas with abundant water. While grasslands that are there normally are found growing in regions that have moderate rainfall, right? And in places which have very little rainfall, very extreme conditions, we know that they have a very dry kind of weather, which is why we find thorny shrubs, we find cactus-like plants growing in there. And of course, tundra vegetation is something that we find closer to the polar region, right? Which normally includes your mosses and of course, which includes your lichens, yes? So this is what we understand by this, right? Okay, so are we all clear? I hope now that you are clear with this, right? So over a period of time, we understand that there are different types of natural vegetation that has come into the picture. But if you think about it, if you were to visit any one place, right, we discussed grassland, forests, we have discussed tundra vegetation, we have discussed desert. But if you had to pick a place which has beautiful natural vegetation, which place would you pick? You can tell me in the chat right now. Which place are you going to pick if you had to go to any place with natural vegetation? Tanishka tells me forest, right? Then I can see Sahana says grassland, Bali, okay, forests. Now I'm hoping many of you are saying tundra, grassland, valley, forest, forest, okay, all right. Someone is very specific, ma'am, Jammu Kashmir, because it's beautiful there, absolutely. Manali, okay, awesome. Okay, so now of course, I mean, I have a forest with me, so we are going to visit the forest, right? Now this is a beautiful forest that is there. Now, when you talk about forests again, we've been learning about forests right from our lower grades, right? And when we talk about forests, we know that they're very, very important to us. Because when you think about it, let me just go back, right? So when we talk about forests, yes, we know that from the forests that are there. So let me just go back. What all do we get from forests? Yes, what all do we get from forests? Or rather, what all do we get from plants? Can you tell me? What all do we get from plants? Yes, I've gone out of the screen, so I'll move my table a little bit. So I can see many of you are saying, me, mom, we get food. Exactly. So from the forest, we see that we get a lot of food, right? Food for us, food for animals as well, right? Because we know that plants that are there have the ability to prepare their own food and they serve as a source of food for other organisms. Now, most importantly, plants perform photosynthesis. So oxygen gas, which is super important for us to survive, is produced or a large portion of it, we get it from the plants. Then what do we get? Of course, we get wood from all of the trees that are there, right? The furniture that we make, many of the things that are there are made out of wood. So very important. Medication, right? Medicines especially. Lot of, you know, components are present inside the plants that act as medicines, yes? So this right here is also important. So very quickly, if we were to see, right? In the forest, we see that it provides, apart from that, it also provides fodder for livestock. That means food for livestock that is there. Now, along with this, we also get latex, like rubber, right? And then we also see that we get timber from the wood. Then we see we get fruits and flowers that are there. Then, of course, we see it is shelter for animals. Then, of course, we get different spices and medicinal herbs, right? So at one go, if you see, we took a whole tour around the forest, yes? It was very fast, but we took a quick tour around the whole forest, yes? So quickly we see that plants that are there produce oxygen, it provides food. We also see that apart from the things that we discussed, it protects the soil. Now along with this, we know that the trees that are there, the roots hold and bind the soil, prevent soil erosion from happening. And along with this, we also see that it stores underground water as well. Now along with this, we also know that there are various animals that live in the forest or animals that are found in natural vegetation. And here we observe that in this particular case, we see that these animals apart from just being there, they're also helpful for us because we get a lot of animal based products. So milk, meat, wool, honey, they're all animal based products.
Now this topic right here is a very simple basis of the chapter you've learned in science which is crop production and management, right? So this right here is going to be very simple and easy. Now students who are spamming in the class, I request you to pay attention in class because as I teach, a lot of your doubts are going to be clarified and I will explain all of this to you. So I will tell you about Menti but before I get started with Menti, I need 5 minutes of your time to discuss because the next two topics we are going to discuss is going to be examination important. Right? It's very very important for your examination so please pay attention. Yes, I will be taking all of your doubts. Right? Timber versus word, humidity versus moisture, I will be taking all the doubts. Don't worry. Yes? Okay. So now with this we understand that this vegetation, this natural vegetation is very important. But where do we find this natural vegetation? Now we find it in a domain that is there which we call as biosphere. Now what is this biosphere? It is a narrow zone on of the earth, right? Where land, water and air interact with each other in order to support life. So if you were to take the earth, right? We know that the earth that is there is made up of 70% of water, right? And this is a concept we have learned in 7th standard in geography that we are going to recall. So we know that the earth that is there, if I were to roughly draw, 70% of it is water. And all the water that is there makes up a domain called as the hydrosphere, right? All the water that is there makes up hydrosphere. Now we also know that we have a land surface as well, right? So we know that the land that is there belongs to lithosphere, yes? And we know that the earth that is there is also surrounded by air, right? Now we see that it is surrounded by air which we call as atmosphere, yes? Now because we have water, air, land, soil and all of this, right? There is a point, a narrow zone. You could say it could be on land, it could be on water also. But it is a narrow zone where all these three meet, right? We see that it is a narrow zone where all these three meet. And because we have all these elements, right? They're all essentially non-living elements that are there. We have all these non-living elements that come together and they allow or they make for life to happen, right? So that is the reason if living organisms are able to survive, right? Which is why we see here that this narrow zone where these three interact and meet is what we call as biosphere. So if you think about it, right? Do you think that we will be able to survive without air. Do you think we'll be able to survive without air? Do you think we'll be able to survive without soil? Do you think we'll be able to survive without water? No, right? We will not be able to survive. Absolutely not. Yes? Biosphere is where you and I are. This narrow zone in and around me where I have water available, where I have air available, where I'm on land. This is a narrow zone where everything is interacting, right? That point where living organisms are present in itself is what you call as biosphere, right? So we see that this right here is what we understand as biosphere. And one thing you need to understand is that interaction, yes, interaction is a key point. Are we clear? Are we clear that interaction between living and non-living, right? There is interaction between living and non-living. If air is around me, I am breathing it in, right? I am breathing, I am interacting with it. If water is there, I will drink the water, right? So this right here is what we understand as interaction or you can say interrelation as well, right? So that right here is also important, yes? So now we see that a region where there is interaction between living and non-living, right? So we see that this right here is what we call as ecosystem. So in the biosphere, somebody asked me, ma'am, what is the difference between biosphere and ecosystem? Now in the biosphere, which is a zone, right? So think of biosphere as a road, right? Think of it as a road. And in that we see that there is a zone where there could be many parts, many regions on the road, right? Where there is interaction between living and non-living that supports life, right? So this is what you understand as ecosystem. Are you all clear? Yes, are you all clear? Adhya bacha, is this how to speak in class? If I have students who are spamming, I request you not to, right? Okay, are we all clear? Ma'am, are living organisms included in the biosphere? Yes, they are included in the biosphere, right? 
Okay. All clear. Why is land conservation important? You will have to watch the video on land as a resource, right? Ram Krishnan, please kindly, if you are speaking about me, kindly don't say that. But if you're speaking about others, also don't say that, right? That's not a right way of speaking. Please be, please maintain the decorum in my class. That's all I would like to say. Kanchika, whatever is not clear, let me know. Yes? I want questions related to this. If you ask me questions based on land resource or soil as a resource, it's going to be very difficult for me, right? I'll be able to explain this when I am taking the mentee quiz, right? Okay. Yes, Ansh, I'm going to take your doubt. Okay, I will take it. Just give me two more minutes, I'll wind this up because your doubt is very elaborate. So now we understand that this is what we call as an ecosystem, right? So there is interaction between living and non-living. So we see that there is interaction between living and non-living. And between living organisms also we have interaction, right? So for now you and I are talking, this is a kind of interaction, yes? So now apart from this also, we know that we interact with other living organisms for food, right? So if you think about it, we know that a grasshopper that is there would probably feed on a producer. But we know because grasshoppers would feed on plants, right? But at the same time, frogs that are there would feed on grasshoppers because that is food for them. Or a snake that is there would feed on a frog because that is food for the snake. So here we see that there is a sequence of who is eating who, right? So it is kind of like if I was eating, let's assume, right? If I'm a, like, let's take an example. There is a plant, right? And then of course I see that there is a uh, let's maybe use another example. We see that there is a plant, right? And then we see that there is a deer, right? Which will feed on the plant. Now, who will feed on this deer? The tiger will feed on this deer. Yes. So it is a linear sequence of who is eating who. And this who this linear sequence that we see is what we call as a food chain. And of course, in this particular case, we see that the ecosystems are filled with different kinds of food chains that are there. So from this, we understand that this right here is very important. And ultimately what happens, all this interaction results in the fact that in the end, it reaches a decomposer, which is nothing but your microorganisms that will decompose, right? It will break down the complex molecules into simpler substances. They go back to the soil, which is then fed by the producer, right? So this right here is a cyclic thing that not cyclic, I would say, but it is a sequence of who eats who, right? Very simple and easy. So from this simply, we can understand that forest that is there is our wealth. But have we been taking care of our forests? Have we been taking care of our natural vegetation? Yes or no? Have we taken care of our natural vegetation? Yes or no? Right? Absolutely not. Right? What do you see behind me? You see that abundant natural vegetation is there. But what has happened? I want you to observe and tell me. Abundant natural vegetation was there, but something has happened. Very good. Exactly. Deforestation. Right? So over a period of time, we have been exploiting the natural vegetation where we have cut down large... <coughs> <coughs> where we have cleared forests by cutting down trees. Right? And why have we cut down these trees? Because we want to do agriculture or because we want large areas of land to feed the, you know, the cattle that are there. So eventually leads to overgrazing. Then of course we need it for timber. Then eventually it also results in forest fires, right? So forest fires are again very off late, especially if you've been reading the news. Forest fires have been seen across different parts of our country, across various regions in North America, and they have spread like a large percentage of land has been cleared by forest fires, right? So we see that this right here is something that we observe. So eventually when you think about it, there are various factors that are affecting our natural resources or our natural vegetation, yes? So some of it we have discussed, which is of course deforestation. So let me use another color. We've discussed deforestation, forest fires. Now, of course, if deforestation happens, we know that the soil will be exposed, which means soil erosion will happen. Now, apart from this, we also see that tsunami and landslides can also cause, right? It can affect natural vegetation. But these are a little bit more of natural causes that happen. 
Then of course construction activities in order to build houses and housing. We see that this right here again we clear large areas of land right. So again of course apart from that poaching right poaching of animals yes. So poaching is the illegal hunting down of animals yes. It is the illegal hunting down of animals and why do people hunt animals any of you can tell me yes can any of you tell me why poaching happens yes or no yes i will be taking your doubts don't worry please don't spam right just please pay attention to me i will take your doubts for their skin exactly right so we know that for their skin for their nails at times for their teeth sometimes for horns and even sometimes for feathers as, as well right so we see that animals are being hunted down to get all of this so now that we see that over a period of time our natural vegetation is getting depleted now can we sit quiet thinking that okay natural vegetation is gone we can't do anything so let's just let it be can we do that can we as students can we as responsible people right not just us but as a society can we say that are everything is gone we can't do anything now let's just put our hands in the air absolutely not right so we cannot do that which is why there have been various steps taken towards protection yes and we will understand this many of you have doubts in this topic which is why i will go a little slow here right so we're going to talk about methods of conservation and this is a short short topic that will come in your exams right examination point of view may this is very very important students please star mark this yes please please star mark this okay so first and foremost we see that in order to protect our for, what do you say in order to protect our forests right or i would say we practice something called as social forestry now how many of you here are confused about what is social forestry now this is very simple and easy right now social forestry that is there is basically a forestation of barren and deforested lands now before i explain this to you i want you to honestly tell me how many of you are clear with the topic afforestation reforestation how many of you know what is what what is afforestation what is reforestation are they the same are they different right or how many of you are like ma'am i don't know what is what right yes okay many of you are like ma'am i know i know if you know you tell me ma'am both are same not confused ma'am me ma'am bo both are not same both are different right they are both different planting trees is called afforestation okay then what is reforestation ma'am don't know little bit now everybody is like ma'am i don't know okay some are different ma'am something is different about them i know but i don't know what exactly is different i will tell you right see basically both are planting trees right so here of course we see that this is a process of planting trees right and we will plant trees in the same area okay we will plant it in the same area where the number of trees is decreasing that means if i have a piece of land okay it's already a forest land there are some trees but there are very little trees okay very less trees for me here so if i go to the same piece of land where i know number is decreasing but i go there and i plant some more trees then i am doing reforestation right yes then what is afforestation afforestation is when new trees are planted right so we see that new trees are planted in an area where no trees were present earlier that means that it's pre we for example as a piece of land right and we want to increase forest cover but earlier it was probably it may or may not have had trees right then if this is an area where earlier there are no trees imagine it is full empty i go there and i plant some trees then i am doing afforestation are you clear yes are you all clear on how afforestation is and what is reforestation then based on that we see that in this particular case social forestry is growing trees in barren lands right so we are making use of lands which are unused or they are left fallow right that means that we have not 
grow on anything. So in unused and fallow lands, if I grow and plant trees, then I am doing social forestry. Are we clear? Because many of you had a doubt. So your key word, key word is unused and fallow land, right? So think about a land which is unused or it has been left unused for a long period of time. Then that is what you call as unused or fallow land. Yes? Now this of course we know that we do this in order to meet our growing needs, right? This is done for meeting our needs. Then of course we know that we can promote the ideology of importance of forest and that's where one Mahotsav takes place, right? Now one Mahotsav that is there can also be called as the festival of trees. What do you say one in Hindi? What does one in Hindi mean? Can you tell me all of you? You should tell me what does one mean? Before, I mean I've learned it in Hindi now you have to tell me what does one mean, right? Jungle, forest, ha, see, Hindi mein hum forest ko one bulate hai, right? So basically it is a festival of trees. Now do you know when it is celebrated, right? So this is mainly a festival where normally a large number of trees are planted, normally celebrated in the first week of July, right? And we see that this is also to improve the awareness on conservation. So uh, improving Awareness is also very, very important. If people don't know what is happening to our forest, then they are always going to be oblivious. I'm using a new word. I'm saying the word oblivious. Oblivious means they will not know, right? She is oblivious to his, uh, she is oblivious to his cheating, right? That means she doesn't know that he is cheating in exam, right? So that is what you mean by oblivious, yes? So now, of course, this right here is important. Next is to establish protected areas, right? So we need to make sure that whatever existing wildlife and natural vegetation is there, they are protected and conserved. So how can we protect it? We can protect it with the help of national parks. We can protect it with the help of wildlife sanctuary, right? We can protect it with the help of biosphere reserves, right? Now, how many of you have learned conservation of animals and plants chapter? It's a science chapter, but because I am a science and I mean, I'm a science teacher primarily and I'm also helping you out with SST. I want you to tell me how many of you have read this topic in your conservation chapter? Yes, no, you can tell me, right? Exactly, right? Many of you are saying yes. Many of you are saying, ma'am, no, I don't know what is what. So basically, they're all protected areas, okay? And take a screenshot of this. This is going to help you understand everything very, very clearly, yes? So basically, when I say it is protected area, that means that there is an authority which is involved and they will be the ones which will tell that, okay, if this is an area of forest, right? If this is an area of forest, then this is now protected by the government. Now, which government protects it? Who can do what inside that area is something we have to understand that differs from wildlife sanctuary to national park to biosphere reserve. Now, of course, the definitions of all of it is there in your textbooks. You can star mark it, but I'll tell you in a way you will understand very easily, right? Now, a wildlife sanctuary that is there. Wildlife, right? The word in it says, says that, right? So we see that this particular wildlife sanctuary is devoted for the protection of wildlife. So if I am saying that this area near my house is a wildlife sanctuary, what is it protecting? It is protecting the wildlife, right? And this particular area is free from any human activities. Humans cannot do activities like getting food, maybe getting some wood, nothing they can do, right? So we see that it is banned or it is free from human activity. Now, who is responsible for maintaining this wildlife uh, sanctuary? It comes under the state governments, right? So this is very, very important. Then, of course, next we have National Park, right? So, National Park is an area where no human activity is, again, not allowed, right? And it's under the jurisdiction, jurisdiction of the central government. And then we have Biosphere Reserve, right? Biosphere Reserve is huge, okay? So, when compared to your National Parks and when compared to your... Um, when compared to your uh, wild, I mean wildlife sanctuary, biosphere reserves are huge, right? And we see that it is protected in order to conserve different ecosystems, yes? And we see that biosphere reserves are not maintained by state or central, but rather they are created by the UNESCO. 
Yes, you understand this. It is maintained by the UNESCO. So these are some examples. So before I go ahead, students, take a quick screenshot. I will start Menti soon. Don't worry. Okay. Yes. Awesome. All right. So now we know. See, whoever is telling ma'am what is the difference between this and this, what is the difference between this and this, I have explained it all. It's all here. Now, of course, we have the next one that is there, which is going to be, if you think about it, this is methods of conservation. That is preve preventing illegal activities and agreement with SITE. Now, what is site? Site is nothing but the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species and by Fauna and Flora. And what do they do? Their main aim is to look at the wild animals, right? So, make sure that it ensures that international trade in specimens of wild animals and plants does not threaten their survival. That means that there is no illegal trade or trade that would hamper their survival. Yes? So, this right here, we see that with, with, with the help of this, we are also able to conserve a lot of wild animals and of, of course making poaching illegal we also see that we were able to protect the number of wildlife that is there yes okay uh, Anvati you can ask towards the end of the class now very quickly somebody was asking me two questions uh, Ansh was asking me two questions after which I will tell you give you the mentee code see one was what is uh, oh this doesn't work one second one was the difference between moisture and humidity, right? So both are more or less the same. But the context in which you use moisture and humidity is different. Moisture is essentially the amount of water vapor you find in air. But if I use this content concept of moisture with respect to climate or climatic conditions, then I will say humidity, right? So technically, if I use it with respect to the weather, I will say it is humidity. Next, what is the difference between wood and timber, right? Now, timber is basically what you get, right? If I cut a tree and I get the whole trunk, that is the timber. But when I polish it, I refine it and I, you know, make sure it, the kind of appearance that we see on our furniture, when I do that, I will get wood out of timber, right? So I hope now Vishal and Ansh, your doubts are clear. So quickly to recall, we learnt about uses of plants, we learnt about uses of animals, what causes the, you know, wildlife and forest loss and of course its conservation, yes? Banargata, there is Banargata National Park, there is Banargata Zoo also, right? Both are there. Ecosystem is there inside the biosphere. Biosphere, may you have ecosystem, yes? Okay, everyone, so with this... We come to the end. But before I come to the end, there is a menti code. So very quickly, Ranjit, can we switch? That's okay. Yes, I will show you the menti code. Much awaited menti code. Can I switch, Ranjit? Okay. So quickly, everybody, with this, I will come to the end of menti, to the, to the end of the class. See, I know many of you are here waiting, you know, uh, you know, you were very excited, right? You were very, very excited to make sure that you play the mentee. And yes, I took a little bit more time than expected. But I, like I always say, no, studying is more important than playing mentee quiz. Yes? Okay. So with this, I think we have set the mentee. Uh, Ranjit? So code is there. Go to www.menti.com. Type in the code 59536848. But... Before I start the live, right? I know many of you are here watching the uh, watching this class and if you've enjoyed this class, quickly hit the like button because I know we can make it up to 150 likes. So very quickly everybody hit the like button on this video and then we will get started with the mentee in the meanwhile, right? Yes. Ranjit, can we just have that turned on? Thank you so much. Contour blowing basically is done in steep slopes, right? In order to get, um, to protect or conserve soil, we do contour blowing where we make it into contours, right? We give it a certain path or we contour it so that the water can flow, right? Yes. Ma'am, code isn't clear. 
5953 Yes? Okay. So now how many of you are super excited? Yes? How many of you are super duper excited for today's Menti quiz? Yes? Many of you are like, ma'am, Menti kab hai? Aap Menti kab karoge? Right? How many of you are waiting? Now here I am with Menti. Now I'm going to quickly wrap up. 10 questions are there. 15 minutes mein ho jayega, no? 15 minutes, easy peasy. Yes? I know you all spam menti everywhere. Wherever you got the chance, you will spam. Are no problem. In case we are having dinner, it's fine. You can give me the koya. I mean, eat dinner and come. I'll not make you sit in class. Olympiad soon, soon. As you can see, if you go right now in the channel, you will find a video of mine where I'm solving Olympiad questions for class 8. So go check out that short, okay? And let me know if you enjoyed that short as well. Yes. Ma'am, I don't know how to do menti. Can I? Yeah, yeah, you can give in chat box. Not a problem as well. UNESCO that is there is basically a division of the United States, right? And you tell me the full form of UNESCO. If I give you all the answers, then how is that possible? You should also do some learning, no? I have not upset. Oh, I will finish class and then go home and then I will. Ma'am, jaldi, jaldi. Zarur, right? Yes, not United States. <laughs> United Nations. Okay. Very good, all of you. Ma'am, uh, land versus road. See, basically, land that is there is a piece which has your soil and everything. Road is a, what do you say, a way that we pave, right? A, a way to my house. That is a path we pave. That road is on the land. That's the only thing. Yes? Very good, Chinmay. United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. Beautiful. So everyone, I'm going to get started. Those of you who don't know, El Nino Effect, but I will teach you that. Don't worry. But for now, maybe not in this class. But soon. Yes? So everyone, I hope you're all excited. Yes? Okay. In this context, if Peter's family does organic, I will take that doubt. Okay. So now, of course, everyone will get started, right? We are going to get started. Yes. Okay. So let's have a look at question number one, everybody. If in case you've not joined Menti, you give me the answer in the chat box. These are all NCRT questions mainly. So I've clubbed your NCRT solutions as well with this so that it becomes easy. So which of the following is not a factor of soil formation? Time, soil texture, organic matter, or is it climate? Yes. I hope you are all excited, right? And I hope you enjoyed today's class. After a very long time, I've been taking a live class where I've taught. I mean, it feels very different. So I hope you missed me as much as I missed you in live classes and teaching classes as well, right? Yes. Students, I'm happy that 38 of you by one we won in majority, right? But the answer is option B, okay? Now, what is soil or how is soil formed? Can you tell me what is the process by which soil formation takes place? Soil formation takes place by the process of weathering, right? Where large rocks are broken down into soil particles, right? Weathering takes place. Now, what all affects weathering? We know that the climate is one of the uh, factors that affect weathering, right? We know organic matter, the natural organic components that are there along with the living organisms that affects it. Time. Time is a very important factor because you know that longer duration, the nature of soil, soil texture, all of that matters. So time is a very, very important factor. And there's a fun fact given in your textbook as well, right? It takes, a, all, takes about 1000 years to get like this much of soil. I think something of that sort is there. So which is why soil texture, how does the soil feel? Is it coarse? Is it grainy? Is it fine? All of that depends once the soil is only formed. No, that's not a thing that contributes towards soil formation. So I hope you are clear with this. Yes? Okay. Ansh, I'll take your question. Chat is running really fast. Just give me one moment. Question number two, everybody on your screen now. We are terrestrial animals. Land is good for us. Which one of the following method is most appropriate to check soil erosion in steep slopes? When you say steep slope, you can say mountain slope also. Uh, 100 years. Thank you, Surinder. Thank you. It is 100 years. Food chain versus food web in the context that Peter's family does organic farming. 
through latest technology and scientific way. How is this even possible? So basically, if concept of food chain, food web, when you talk about organic farming, it could be explained in the aspect of probably the in organic farming, we use a lot of natural components, right? We use a lot of natural based products that are there, manure and everything else. So in that aspect, we would see that in with respect to organic farming, we would see that there is a balance with respect to the soil microflora, right? With respect to the soil microbes and other animals, like for example, the aquatic animals that are there. So normally instead of using fertilizer, if you use, you know, natural fertilizers, we see that nat natural manure and everything, it will not harm aquatic animals and thereby balance is maintained, right? It's a far-fetched answer. But I'm sh I'd like to give you a better explanation towards the end, right? But very good. With respect to, I completely forgot I was explaining the other one, right? Steep slope, mountain slope. Mountain slope mein kya hota hai? Contour plowing and terrace cultivation. Shelter belts, mulching, rock dams are all seen in play, right? So correct answer is option C. Yes. Moving on to question number three. If anybody has not written uh, their names, please write it now. Barren soil is soil where you find no vegetation, right? It is barren. There is no vegetation in, in that soil. So it's basically what you call as barren, right? Moving on. Question number three, everybody on your screens now. Which of the following is not focused? is not in favor of the conservation of nature. Yes, switching off light bulb when not in use, close the tap immediately after using it, use public transport and carpool, dispose poly packs after shopping. Think about it. Very good all of you, very good. Many of you have, majority of you have got the answer, right? So in this particular case, what do we observe? We see that switching off light bulbs when not in use helps in conserving electricity and we know that large amount of natural resources goes into producing electricity. Closing tap, we know that thereby we conserve water. Using public transport and carpooling, we know that thereby we are saving fuel and of course we say that at this particular point we see that we also save in a lot of fuel and water, um, I mean sorry, air, so, you know we make sure that air pollution doesn't happen. Disposing poly bags, basically your, um, what do you say, your plastic bags, immediately after you shop, you go and you throw it, you are increasing landfills, you are not reusing, you are not repurposing, thereby you are not conserving, right? Yes, very easy. Chotu sa question, piara sa question, right? So we'll move on to question number four everyone on your screens now. Feels very weird that the chat is right there, but it's okay. Ganga, Ganga Brahmaputra plain of India is, a, is an overpopulated region. True or false? Ganga Brahmaputra plain of India is an overpopulated region. True or false? Class 6 ki live 6 baje hogi, Dharmendar. It's very easy. Super duper easy. Satya... Land is good for us because we are terrestrial organisms, right? So we know that your Ganga Brahmaputra plain mainly incorporates your northern plain region and we know that a lot of fertile soil is available which is why we know that that particular region is intensively cultivated, right? Which is why in this right your correct answer is option A. Now we will move on to question number 5 everyone on your screens now. Okay. Water availability per person in India is declining. Is this statement true or false? Yes? I will explain Niyati with respect to humans. I will explain that. Don't worry. Okay. Alright everybody. I will take your doubts. Next lecture tomorrow. I will be coming for bio. Right? So less than 10 seconds left. I hope all of you have answered. It's a very easy question. So we know that over a period of time, we know that water availability per person in India is declining, right? Or the quality of water has been declining, which is why we need to conserve water, make sure that we reduce the rate at which water pollution takes place. So correct answer here is true. 
So very quickly, let's have a look at the leaderboard after five questions, right? So now, of course, on top, I can see it is Riddhi Chatterjee from class eight. I can see Kavya, Vedant 2010, Shreya. I have a proud learner here. Bhavik from grade five, Bill, who's the fastest, Isma Khan, Swayam 25, and Anviti Agarwal. Love you, ma'am. So sweet, bacha. Love you too, right? Yes. So tomorrow, I'm taking a menti quiz for all of you for microorganisms. You've been asking me for menti quiz. Your demand has been supplied, right? I have provided you. So tomorrow, we'll do top 20 questions on menti. Okay. It's okay in case if menti quizzes are not for you, you can always come live and give me the answer, right? Tomorrow, 8 p.m. Bill is Ripan. Oh, okay. Ripan, well done. Well done. Yes? Okay. I don't have the timetable with me, but every day at 8 p.m. you have grade 8 classes, except maybe this week one day you may not have. But apart from that, normally at 8 o'clock you have grade 8 class, right? Yes. Ma'am, common property resource, as you told, is used by community. Can every individual in the world use that? Yeah. Park, anybody can come and use. No, if I'm coming, imagine there is a park in New York. I can go visit that park. If there's a park in Australia, I can visit, right? It's a different thing. There's normal park, then there is national park, right? So there is a difference. We're talking about the common resources. Anybody can visit. Nothing like that. Moving on to the last three questions. Class 7 ka live 7 p.m. hoga. Simple. 6th grade, 6 p.m. 7th grade, 7 p.m. 8th grade, 8 p.m. Easy peasy for you all to remember. Question number 6, everyone, on your screens now, right? Rows of trees planted in the coastal areas to check the wind movement is called as intercropping. Is this statement true or false? Yes? Can you tell me? We are talking about rows of trees which are arranged like this. That has to block the passage of wind. What is it going to be? Is it called as intercropping? Thank you, Anne's world. So sweet. This is very simple. Easy peasy question. Everybody has voted. Statement is false. Those trees, when we talk about it, when they are planted in a single row that blocks the path of wind, they act as a shelter belt, right? And we know that shelter belts are normally used in dry areas, like areas with less rainfall and in coastal regions to prevent soil erosion. Intercropping is mainly seen wherein we grow crops alternatively one after the other, right? So that is what we call as intercropping. Let's quickly move on to question number 7 everybody. Question number 7 on your screens now, right? Human interference and changes of climate can maintain the ecosystem. Human interference and changes of climate can maintain the ecosystem. Yes or no? Very quickly everybody. Super simple, easy peasy question. Very good. We're talking about if we as human beings affect the balance of the ecosystem and if we, let's say, start overusing everything and if climate change happens also or it's okay, that is necessary to maintain. Is this statement true or false? Absolutely false, right? We know that this is what disrupts the balance of the ecosystem, which is why the correct answer is false. Students, you need to read the statement. Sometimes you are making silly mistakes because you are not reading statements. How many of you have not read the statement properly and you have just heavy given the answer? That should not happen because these are where you unnecessarily lose marks, right? It's very simple and easy. Yes? I met you in person. Riddhi, have I met? Have you met? Okay. Chapter 3 soon. Soon. I'll be doing it. Ma'am, I read properly. Very good. Are, don't say sorry. This is how we learn. Moving on. Which of the following are the major threats to the environment because of the expansion of agriculture and construction activity? It causes land degradation. It causes landslide and soil erosion. It leads to desertification. And or is it all of the above? Right? Oh, is it Anj? Maybe you could try it in another phone. This is not an easy question, but it's a very direct question. Very, very direct. 
Very good. I'm so proud. So proud of all of you. It causes land degradation, which eventually leads to landslides and soil erosion that, of course, eventually at one point gives rise to desertification, right? Did I? Oh. Ma'am, how are forests distributed on the basis of latitude? See, basis on the latitude, you know, you have tropical, subtropical, temperate, right? You have all those zones and based on that, you have your forests, right? And how does that depend? Based on how much sunlight comes. So, around the equator region, you know that the sunlight is almost direct and at one point, it is above, you know, your head at noon. In temperate regions, much so less, so on and so forth. So, that is how the distribution happens. Okay. Moving on to question number 9 everyone on your screens now. The breaking up of exposed rocks by temperature changes, frost action, plants and animals is called as what? Erosion, weathering, landslides or desertification. Breaking up of rocks, right? Okay, yes. Let me see if you remember, Rave. Don't test my memory like this. You also know I'm human, right? You know that I'm not a superhuman being with... Very good. See, actually, I'll tell you something. Exposed rock is a word I don't... Although it is weathering, technically, when you think about it, when rocks undergo this kind of break... Uh, when it breaks down into smaller particles leading to soil formation, it's called as weathering. Now moving on to the 10th and last question for the day. Let's have a look at question number 10 everybody on your screens, right? So let's have a look. The narrow zone of contact between lithosphere, hydrosphere and atmosphere is called as what? Land use, hummus, rock dams or biosphere? You should be able to get the answer very, very clearly, right? I live very far away from office. It's almost like 16, 17 kilometers. Oh no, 13, 14 kilometers, sorry. Okay, very good all of you, very good. I can see that many of you have probably given me the correct answer because this was the most popular doubt for today, which is biosphere, right? So biosphere, that is, there is a natural zone, or a na not natural, narrow zone of contact between lithosphere, hydrosphere and atmosphere. Ma'am, please tell Tundra. Am I not pronouncing it right? Because my teachers have taught me as Tundra region. That's how I have learned, right? either ways. So with this, we'll have a look at the final leaderboard. Let's see what the final leaderboard has to say. Okay. So now I can see that Vagmi is the fastest, but Riddhi is on top. Congratulations, Riddhi Chatter G class 8 with 9,513 points. Then I have Shreya, I have Vivek, I have Atulya, Komal, Sharanya, Cosmic Explorer, Vedant 2010 and Rup Rupin, right? I hope I remember it right. So, well done all of you. Ma'am, I am Cosmic Explorer Yuvraj. Congratulations, Yuvraj. Chandraleka, I have already answered your questions on how forests are distributed based on the latitude, right? Yes. Thank you so much and so sweet. Thank you so much. Yes? Yes, class 9 students are here already and they're like, ma'am, do not forget. Okay. Oh, yes. I remember, I remember. Yes. I do. I did meet somebody in Mumbai. Okay, so with this everybody, I will be signing off and as you all know, right, my 6th, 7th and 8th has got you covered and we take your advice and we, we of course take your suggestions very seriously. So if you enjoyed this particular class, do not forget to let me know in the comments of this video and very, very soon we're going to have a lot of interesting classes coming up for you. So all you need to do is to stay tuned. Thank you so much for being a part of today's class. I will see you all soon. But up until then, students, take care, lots of love and bye-bye.